Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex here. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at five more projects that wanted to race in Formula 1, got very close, but never actually raced. So, we're going to be looking at some really interesting cars in this episode. We're going to be going into the sort of 90s and also looking into the modern day last sort of 10 years as well. Some really interesting projects that never quite took off. A quick note about the gameplay, that is a Mazda MX-5 gameplay from iRacing. It's a really fun race, so I thought I'd show you to that in the background. Nonetheless, let's jump into this video and talk about five more Formula 1 cars that never raced. So the first one I'm going to have on this list today is the Durango Hart P01. So if you don't know who Durango are, they used to be a really good team in sort of the, the middle tiers of motorsports. So if you're looking at, you know, Formula 3 level, Formula 2 level, back then it was Formula 3000. And they were racing in that in the early 1990s, but they were failing to really have much success in these championships, which when they came to the idea that they wanted to race in Formula 1 a couple of years later was a bit of a surprise because they had not found really any success in the lower formula that they were racing in in Formula 3000. Now Formula 3000, as I previously mentioned, it's a bit like GP2, it's a bit like Formula 2 currently, it's that you know that step below Formula 1, so just below it. So if you're winning Formula 3000 back in the day, you were pretty much sort of set for Formula 1. It isn't quite that easy nowadays, but it's sort of the case. It's still that, you know, if you're top, top of that second tier, you're probably good enough for Formula 1. And unfortunately for Durango, they weren't really good enough as a team to be promoted to Formula 1. But at the end of 1995, they decided they were going to enter Formula 1 in 1997. Nobody took this as a serious announcement. Everyone thought, okay, this was just like a bit of a, a stunt to try and gain a bit of publicity for their, their Formula 3000 team, which was failing. And they were trying to just get sponsors for that. But no... In the uh, middle of April 1996, they announced that they would be entering Formula 1 or they'd be ready to enter Formula 1 in 1997. They'd have all of the, the drawings and the, the concept art ready for this car, the Durango P01 to be ready as a car. And everyone thought at this point, okay, this is going to happen. Durango are going to be in Formula 1. So the uh, the car, the P01, was designed by Enrique Scarabroni, and the chassis was going to be built by a specialist in France called SNPE. Unfortunately for everyone involved, this did not happen. It did not go ahead. Durango didn't have the financial people behind them, the sponsors to go through with this idea of racing in Formula 1. And of course, everyone has those aspirations to go to Formula 1, whether you be a team owner, a team, or part of the team, or a driver. Everyone, in a way, wants to be a part of Formula 1. They tried it, they attempted it, they got very close, but unfortunately for Durango, they didn't get the opportunity to race in Formula 1 in 1997 like they dearly wished. So next on this list is a very interesting Williams, the Williams BMW FW21B. So this was a car in 1999 that was actually using a sort of a, a test bed for the 2000 season because in 1999 Williams were using a Supertech V10 engine and they didn't have as much success as they had done the previous years. In 98 they had been third in the championship and then five the previous six years before that they had won the championship so Williams had come off a lot of success and then in 1999 they had a bit of a down season with Zanardi and Schumacher behind the wheel so at the end of the 99 season they decided to switch over to BMW and in the 99 season as I've been saying they started testing their current car with the BMW engine. Now, you can see some of the pictures actually, uh, a really interesting looking car, obviously a very weird looking one because we'd never really expected a car to look like this because we've actually never seen this car race. So there's not that many pictures out there of this F21B. Uh, this test program proved to be a little bit more successful than the year prior. As in 2000, they went on to have a little bit more success than they did in 1999. In the 2000 season, with Schumacher and Button behind the wheel, they finished third place in the Constructors championship but at the same time they didn't really amass any extra points it was very very similar the amount of points they had between 1999 and 2000 there was only one point in it they scored 35 in 99 and two in 2000 they scored 36 so only one point in it but if you remember back to 2000 there were there were two dominant teams at the time uh, you can probably guess who it was obviously McLaren and Ferrari so uh, when you see the cars behind Schumacher finished fifth in the championship button eighth so the step to BMW obviously was uh, definitely an improvement improvement 
Schumacher had three podiums that year and finished fifth place to send in the constructors sorry the drivers championship but then the big four guys were in front of him so this uh, project with BMW started off with a pretty decent success to be fair we've seen how hard in one day Formula 1 it is to join and like Honda for example and join and have success straight away so BMW came in with the Williams team which were on a much lower budget than the other two at the top of the championship I think it's got to say this was a pretty good project and even though this car particular wasn't raced the Williams BMW wasn't raced in 1999 it was a great start a great platform for a more successful 2000 season it really is interesting looking back into Formula One's history and seeing all these possible projects that could have happened and you do wonder if some of these had come through how much would it have changed Formula One history do you think some of these cars would have been able to battle for championships do you think would have a surprise champion like we did with Braun in 2009 anyway on to the next one on this list and that is the Phoenix Heart from 2002 so after Prost went through a lot of financial difficulties towards the end of 2001 and dissolved they uh, well they had to try and sell off their assets so Phoenix Heart tried to buy up these assets and they did quite a lot of it they got the majority of it but most importantly it didn't include the FIA entry for the Prost team so Strangely, the team actually did show up to several Grand Prix, but they didn't actually, you know, they couldn't actually race because they had no contract with tyre manufacturers and they had, you know, sort of no entry, obviously, so they, they just couldn't race. So they were physically, as a team, ready to race, but they just couldn't do it. Now, this sort of links into the Prost Ferrari AP05, which was up to a point about 50% through in the, the wind tunnel model. So the Prost team did have a car ready for the 2002 season. Like with a lot of these uh, cars that we saw in the last episode, with Toyota, they sort of built a car, and even with the Manor, we saw they built a car, up to a certain stage and unfortunately it just didn't go any further than that and that's mo mostly at the wind tunnel stage so there's a couple of pictures of the car and I think a couple of people I don't know I could be wrong I think a couple of people have tried to put together this car in real life so you'll see I think there's one or two pictures out there of what the Phoenix Heart would have looked like and I think it's towards the end of the 2001 season where Prost were testing and I think they were testing pretty much the car they were going to race in 2002 uh, or bolt-on parts from the 2001 season so you'll see a couple of pictures that I've put up on the screen it's a kind of confusing one there are many sort of different angles you can look at this little particular subject but a possible project that could have gone through it looked very close I mean as we said they pretty much got everything but the race entry and uh, you know the tough FIA stance on the whole thing wasn't going to enable them to race unfortunately so even though they were so so close they couldn't quite go the full distance and actually race in Formula 1 and I'm not really sure what happened to them afterwards they're not really a team I would have ever known of unless I was looking you know back into the past of Formula 1 and trying to find cars and teams that never raced who thought they were going to also on that last one as well here's some proof that Gaston Mazikane was probably going to be one of the drivers for that team but unfortunately he never got that opportunity to race for this team because as we've said they didn't have the full package together to race in Formula 1 so it looks like this was quite far in process because if they were signing up drivers well we've got to assume that they were quite far down the line in terms of having this project ready and as we've said they were turning up to Grand Prix so they must have felt that they were ready to race in Formula 1, but I guess inside politics, inside, inside of Formula 1, kind of didn't really want to allow them onto the grid. I think they might have thought these guys probably don't exactly know what they're doing. They haven't really got all of the, the things behind them that are capable of actually doing this for a whole season or a couple of seasons. And I'm assuming back in the time of Formula 1, they didn't want to just let anyone enter Formula 1 as it could have just be, you know, become a catastrophe if they were just lapping 10 seconds a lap faster than everyone. So maybe it was for the best these guys didn't race in Formula 1 because I'm not sure exactly how long this project would have lasted. But nonetheless, it's always sad to hear people that could have been in Formula 1, like Gaston, who was probably uh, good enough to at least have a couple of races with this team. And I'm pretty sure he had some races in Formula 1 anyway, but... Uh, not for this team unfortunately so maybe he deserved his chance with this team to just sort of further prove himself but nonetheless let's move on to another one as I've spoken about this project a bit too long so we kind of hinted on this one in the last episode actually but Lola did build a car for the 2010 season they had applied to become one of the new teams at the start of 2000 around 2009 and were starting to put together a car for the 2010 season they've been working on this chassis and put together the b10 slash 30 and they got quite far they got through to the stage where they were designing a scale model which i'll show on the screen right now and you can see by this picture 
it was quite developed. This car looked like it could race in Formula 1. Okay, it didn't look as developed as some of the other teams that raced in Formula 1 at this time, but this car... Maybe, you know, with a few tweaks here and there, could have been maybe around the pace of the guys that raced or were entered in the season of 2010, including the likes of Lotus and Virgin. Unfortunately, though, for the Lola company, their application was turned down. And even though they'd done all of this process up to this point, they didn't get to race in 2010. Uh, the FIA decided to go in favour of the teams USF1, Campos Mater 1 and Mana Motorsport. And we know that both Campos Mater, I think that went into HRT, but USF1 definitely didn't race. So it's, it's obviously sad that this team was close, but not quite close enough. And unfortunately, all of these three teams that joined in 2010, they all failed failed so it's a shame it's a shame and but you know stuff like this i'm sure does happen a lot in motorsport it's it really is a shame that so many people will spend a lot of time trying to make this happen but unfortunately it did not and lola did try and get onto the 2011 calendar i think after it was pretty clear these back three teams weren't really doing much to formula one they tried once again to get back on the grid but Unfortunately, once again, they weren't offered an entry for the 2011 season, and this unfortunately was another unsuccessful attempt from Lola, and we talked about it in the last episode as well. Even though I think I got my facts slightly wrong on that one, which I apologise for, I think Lola overall have, they've been a part of Formula 1, that's no doubt, but as a, a manufacturer in themselves, it hasn't happened that much. They had done a couple of races, but not as much as maybe they would have liked, because Lola, if you think of Formula 1, or just the top sport, you think kind of a way Lola is up there even though they haven't really raced in Formula 1 that much they're um, you know magnificent chassis builder and you know they've done loads of the sort of tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 cars over the years and they're synonymous with motorsport so it's a big shame for them they never got their opportunity to race right at the top level in Formula 1 but unfortunately that's the way it goes the FIA didn't grant them a license and unfortunately for them they never got that opportunity to show how good they were so let's talk about another one of these failed 2010 Formula One projects. So, USF1. So, this has been described as a bit of a terrible attempt at trying to get American racing in Formula One again, or American team racing in Formula One. So it was sort of founded in 2008 by Peter Windsor and Ken Anderson. You may know the name Peter Windsor. He's quite famous in the world of Formula One and... He also does a couple of YouTube videos, I think, as well. But they kind of didn't really just put the time and effort in after securing uh, a contract with Formula 1 or securing an entry in May 2009. They just never really put the time into making this happen. So they did design bits of the car. There's a race car engineering article as well, just showing some of the ins and outs of the car. Showing they had put, you know, they put, they put a bit of thought and you know time into it, but it hadn't really got to the stage of uh, even the last car we were talking about, the Lola. It hadn't really even got to that stage. It was more just concept art, really. They did start to design a bit of a tub for the car, but nothing really more than that. There's only like a little picture here and there of just like the tiny part of the tub of the car. It hadn't even got as far as the Lola project, which had uh, sort of all came together on a bit <laughs> less notice. But the idea was for this whole process to have sort of a mainstay in America being based over there, then having sort of satellite bases all around Europe trying to make this project happen. And they had actually signed a driver already as well, which is Jose Maria Lopez uh, from South America, so maybe not all American team, uh, from Argentina, Jose Maria Lopez, a GP2 driver who we now know uh, racing in like the World Touring Car Champion, Championship winning many times and being successful in many other series that he's been racing in and Formula E as well. Uh, but yeah, he was signed up in, back in 2009, nine, nine years ago, that's crazy, is it? Uh, all that time ago, he was signed up to race for them, but it obviously never came out, and unfortunately for them, uh, a bit of a terrible attitude towards the media, and just everything just sort of imploded from the inside out, and this never really came together, and unfortunately for USF1, their dream of being this amazing, great American team in Formula 1 never worked out, they never got the opportunity to race, and uh, as uh, I've been shown with the pictures, they never really got far into this process. Now, for me, when I heard new teams were coming to Formula 1, USF1 seemed to be the one that seemed like it was going to work out the best, it seemed to be the one with the most clear intention of getting to Formula 1, and it just never worked out, so the early news sounded great, and and then, you know, as it, time went on and not much was happening, we are like, okay, are they going to even race? And of course, they never ended up racing. So, a really weird process there. They 
obviously thought they were going to race, otherwise they would never have got an F1 entry in the first place, but an embarrassing attempt of trying to get into Formula 1, and unfortunately for the drivers and the, the people that were working on this project, it never happened, but if the, the effort wasn't put in from the top, you can understand why this project never succeeded. So the last one I'm going to be speaking about in today's episode is the manner, well see another manner that we didn't speak in the last one, it's the Manor Ferrari MNR1. So in 2015, Manor didn't really come back with a brand new car, they had sort of come with an adapted 2014 car, and obviously after the sad incident with Jules Bianchi in the Japanese Grand Prix in 2014. The team never really recovered from that. They raced in 2015, they raced in 2016, uh, with a little bit more success in 2016 after Verline really pulled it out of nowhere. But after 2016, it all went downhill, as we said, because they, they tried to do it with uh, another car, the MRT-07. That didn't work out, and unfortunately, Manor ceased to exist from the start of the 2017 season. But Going back to the Manor Ferrari MR, M, MNR1, why is it so confusing? This was a car that was designed by the former Toro Rosso designer Luca Forbato, and he was there to try and make sure that the current engine, the 2015 engine, would work with a Manor car. But unfortunately, like a lot of things, due to cost, this car never went into production. And lots of people said that this car went into actually a race scene this car actually raced this would be an ultra not ultra successful but be a much more successful car than the car raced in the 2015 season as seen in the 2015 season stevens mary rossi none of them scored points and after scoring two points the year prior and things were looking up with the 2014 manner it all went sort of brought it back down to earth when the 2015 car was just terrible because it, all it was was a, an adaption of the 2014 car and of course when the rest of the teams are updating and progressing if you stay with the same car with a small update it's just not going to cut it in modern day formula one so people thought this manor ferrari mnr1 i think i said it right if that came into production in the 2015 car if that car was used it would easily be capable of qualifying within the 107 percent rule but unfortunately as we said due to cost they just, this process just couldn't go ahead it wasn't able to go any further than just a concept stage and i would have put up some pictures now by now you'd have seen this car it was I think a full-size model at this stage, or it was you know, at least a half-size model. This car looks like it was capable of racing in Formula 1, obviously if they made it up to full-size, but this car definitely looked like it had a lot of time and effort put into it, but unfortunately, as we said, designing it and making a little model of it is one thing, then actually putting it into production and producing all the parts and updating it continually is a very different thing. So, there we are, there's another sad story for Manor, a team that wanted so much for Formula 1, they were doing so much good for Formula 1, showing you could do Formula 1 on a much smaller budget than the rest, it just didn't come out for them and they sadly ceased to exist after the end of the 2016 season, after another attempt to try and get back into Formula 1 with 2017, but that failed once again like this 2015 updated car project. So. That's it for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Hopefully you found it interesting. Um, a lot of the facts and a lot of the information came from a website called unraced.com. I think it's very fair that I share the sort of feedback that I've got from his website onto this video. So I'll leave a link to this website, Unraced F1, in the description of this one. These videos would be a lot harder to come across or to make without his help. So he's got an incredible website over there where you can read so much more into loads of other projects as well and maybe you can suggest further ones you want me to include in this video so that's pretty much it for this one guys so thank you so much for watching once again one last thing i know a lot of people probably have heard me speak about this already but i just want to to say it once again i'm going to continue to say it now and again as we come towards the deadline for our fundraiser but we are doing a fundraiser for our university project and we really do need your support we've had some amazing support already and we're i think over or just about to hit over halfway through our eventual goal so we're getting there it's getting closer and closer and closer but we haven't quite hit our overall goal so if you'd like to go over there and donate there are some awesome reward tiers over there for you so you won't be just getting nothing back in return you'll be getting some content or a shirt or a poster in return for your awesome donations so that's in the description but until then thanks for watching you'll see the rest of this gameplay in the next episode or the next video i upload so be sure to tune into that one so thanks for watching and you'll see the remainder of this mx5 race which this intense battle for the lead continues to hot up thanks for watching it's been axamadi goodbye